or either early morning, afternoons, or evenings. Uh, welcome back after our summer break uh, to this uh, webinar series of our TransPath plan project. I've heard uh, many of you had really enjoyed their times in Mexico during the workshop. That's nice uh, to hear. I already heard some good stories from Leon himself uh, back in office. Uh, but it's also nice to see each other uh, online again. And it's um, thank you, Leon, for picking up uh, the glove and starting this webinar series again. Let me then also take this opportunity to um, invite you all to go to the, um, the shared document um, in which we have a schedule for the, um, for the webinars. Uh, currently for next month, 18 September, we have Patricia and later in October, uh, Anamika and Mimika um, already scheduled. But uh, further, we are, I think, for this year and early next year, we are still looking for your contributions. So that being said, um, I'm now just going to read the title, how it is in my screen. So Leon, you are going to share your wisdom and insights uh, with us with the title power and empowerment in transdisciplinary research insights for joint problem structure thank you and then uh, let's the floor be yours yeah thank you yeah yeah i think i came up with a really nice title didn't i <laughs> uh, let, let me let me share my screen and my slides and then uh, start presenting um is it okay like this? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So so thanks uh, thanks Yap and thanks everybody for for joining. Um, yeah, I thought I, I'll just share some uh, some some of my own experiences with um, trans transdisciplinary research uh, around uh, um, transformations with a focus on on problem structuring and problem framing, since that is also the phase that I think we're currently in. In most of our projects in the in the transformation pathways planning project, um, I I don't expect that uh, I have uh, uh, mind-boggling new insights for for most of you, but maybe for some of you there is something new, and I I guess and I hope that uh, for everyone it is useful to maybe just uh, once again be be reminded of of some of these issues and and questions. Um, that that require attention, and I do hope that uh, I manage to finish well in time to allow for quite some some discussion to see um, how this plays out in our own project and in our own uh, cases in in the various notes. So, um, yeah, with that being said, and sort of the the rough outline here on slide uh, alongside a picture of the the dike worker a dike worker in uh, in Friesland along the Wadensee coast which is part of one of the dutch uh, case notes um work in progress let's say um let's um, let's start maybe let's start by by just briefly reminding ourselves um of what we sort of set out to do in our in our project, based on our proposal, as we also um, developed it, but also discussed it um, now, now in various meetings. But especially if you look here at uh, what 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 we called Stream One uh, around these these activities in in the various nodes, um, I guess that our initial plans are st are still more or less intact, and that that also means that we really want to do transdisciplinary research and starting with a proper sort of problem diagnosis, problem framing for our case as part of our project. And um, in Mexico, we did not in detail revisit this kind of planning, but I think we still benefited from uh, what we did discuss around our so-called theory of change when, um, when, when we had our first inception workshop in Delft, which actually also was uh, uh, where this part around the, the cases and the activities in the notes and what do we want to, to do and to achieve there uh, was actually also supported by uh, um, Lak Lakshmi and Patti. So I think um, we, we have some basis to build on and maybe it's just good to um, uh, 
to to remind ourselves of that before I continue to share my views and, and, and my experiences on these types of activities in our project. Um, but but then returning to transdisciplinarity, this, this is a picture from, I, th I think, one of the most cited papers, at, at least when it comes to uh, sustainability and, and water types of applications on, on transdisciplinary research. And, and what it basically depicts is that typically there are indeed different phases in a transdisciplinary process, uh, which, which start with problem framing and team building. I guess the stage that we are still in, um, but but hopefully uh, um, um, well well progressing in that phase. But then it, it is about co-creating um, solution-oriented knowledge, and then of course seeing yeah what what uh, what happens if we apply that knowledge and if we can sort of integrate it both in practice and in science. So on the left you see the sort of societal practice. Um, column and on the right you see the scientific practice column and and those are indeed sort of the two the two axes that 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 matter for transdisciplinary research and after mexico i had one more um interesting workshop to attend to before i started my holidays and that was in in um in berlin it, it was part of uh, the the Panterai closing um, sessions of the International Association of Hydrological Sciences. And there we also came to talk about transdisciplinarity. And um, that, that that sort of triggered me to think about it in, in this kind of quadrant. But it's really based on that societal relevance, which is at sort of the, the vertical axis at the, the societal column that, that we saw in the previous picture. And the scientific relevance, sort of the scientific um, column in the previous picture which is here on the horizontal axis and and what we really want to do what what our aspiration and ambition is with um, transdisciplinary research is is, is really to co-create knowledge and, and to co-produce transformations yeah? so to be in 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 the space in in this figure that is both relevant for society and for science because at the end of the day um we are trying to uh, um, either get a PhD or, or a successful postdoc or, or, or another sort of scientific um, contribution as well as, as a societal contribution to, to transformations. And um, when, when you discuss transdisciplinary research or, or when you um, review it, you, you also sometimes encounter either anxieties that, um, hey, we're we're not consultants. That, that, that was a bit the, the anxiety that I heard in Berlin with some of the hydro, hydrology colleagues. Not, not all, but some were saying, but wh why are we doing this? We're, we're, we're scientists. We're, we're not consultants. And indeed, if, if, if we don't get it right as scientists, then maybe we are being societally relevant, but we are maybe indeed producing a nice sort of consultancy type of analysis, but not scientific knowledge. And then um, on, on sort of the scientific dimension, we 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 would um, we would feel. Um, the the other hand is is some something that you hear scientists being concerned about less often, at least in in scientific conferences and journals. But it is of course equally concerning because that is also not what we aspire to. If we really want to do transdisciplinary science, we want not just to have something nice for the scientists. But actually, we do want to also um, co-produce um, societally relevant solutions or, 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 or contributions towards transformations. And of course, we can also ut utterly fail, but let's maybe ignore that for now. But I thought the, the, this quadrant might, might be useful for uh, us in, in designing our casework, both to be sure that it is still scientifically relevant and, and uh, producing something novel, while at the same time um, producing societally relevant knowledge uh, towards transformations. Um, yeah, so, so that's, that's, uh, that's what we aspire to, and it's not easy. I think many of us have experienced that before or by now do realize it. Um, and, and my 
my own experiences, which I wanted to share here a little bit, are um, um, fr from previous research, but but especially a paper that uh, that came out of a previous research project, in which we focused on um, power and empowerment in transdisciplinary research, because that is one of the complications that you do get when you do want to produce science uh, with and for uh, stakeholders in society. Um, and in that in that paper, um, we we did start with reviewing transdiscipline uh, some of the transdisciplinary literature and identifying the challenges and sort of the coping strategies that that are identified in the literature for dealing with those challenges and that results as you may expect in in long tables but if we focus on on problem framing and team building let's say that the first phase of transdisciplinarity um, very commonly mentioned and experienced challenges are um, lack of problem awareness or insufficient problem framing and I think many of the discussions that, that we had in Mexico or, or online when, when the others were in Mexico were really about um, uh, also the, these kind of challenges. How do we get to um, a problem framing that is um, shared by everyone and where the awareness of, of several dimensions of the problem are also um, yeah, sufficiently shared by, by different types of stakeholders. Um, unbalanced problem ownership. Have, still in transpath planning, we, we are trying and, and we have involved not just scientists, but also um, NGOs, uh, civil society organizations. And at the same time, that might still lead to an unbalanced problem ownership to especially the organizations that are currently already active in our project. And how do we get uh, an ownership of our efforts that is not confined to our project teams. And that, that relates also uh, to, the, to the legitimacy of the team. Um, we, by ourselves and alone, cannot um, pretend to, to, to represent also different societal stakeholders. But even if we uh, engage different societal actors, also they need to have a sufficient legitimacy and sufficient um, uh, be sufficiently representative of the different actors and their stakes that are involved in this problem. And those are really typically challenges at, at the early phases of transdisciplinary research. Um, how, we, how we tried to tackle those in that previous um, project was by combining science with um, empowerment through something called the negotiated approach, which was brought in by um, um, an NGO called, called, called Both Ends. And the idea was that, as I think we are also trying in our TransPath project and uh, in all the nodes, to, to prepare the process really together with all the stakeholder representatives. And that means understanding past initiatives and but also being careful and being conscious in, in how we select participants to our uh, workshops and, and to our to our teams um, to also make the, the process design a sort of collective agreement and make sure that that is based also on a good understanding about the situation where we are trying to do our transdisciplinary work including um, the, the the possibilities and the limitations that that existing context poses and then I think um, after that, uh, a joint situation analysis and a joint fact finding, things that are known to, to be helpful in sort of negotiation types of, of situations and to foster mutual understanding and, and, and joint learning. Um, th this is um, the project from which uh, um, we have those experiences. It was called Shifting Grounds. Um, some of you are maybe familiar with it and um, Anamika in fact has been part of it for a relatively short uh, period um, and, and we, we there focused on peri-urban water security, especially groundwater management in peri-urban villages uh, near Kolkata in India and near Kulna in, in Bangladesh and um, it, it was really 
similarly designed maybe as, as, as many of our TransPath nodes. So with PhD and postdoc researchers focusing on different aspects of these cases, but next to it really a, a column uh, here under the negotiated approach, uh, which was uh, led by our uh, civil society partners, our NGOs to really make sure that, that we would connect well with um, uh, the stakeholders in these peri-urban villages. And that uh, um, proved to be a, a very worthwhile, but also not so easy effort. And um, uh, of course, the, the success was um, partial and limited, as I, I, I guess often with transdisciplinary research, but, uh, but, but very useful, I think, and I hope for everyone who was involved, also to, to support future efforts, in my case, like, like this one in TransPath planning. Um, and it means that, um, yeah, all these steps would be done, not just um, by scientists or scientists and maybe some, some high level policy makers or high level representatives of NGOs in workshops, but also really together with, in this case, uh, community representatives of the villages and also including efforts to, to include groups that, and, and in that sense, empower groups that um, would automatically not be necessarily included in these kinds of efforts. Um, and that um, really took uh, a huge additional effort that in designing a scientific project, we easily underestimate, I think, and, and sometimes even, even overlook. Um, now, what I, I, I hope that this all, um, yeah, sounds, sounds familiar and, and like something that, that we all would want to do also in this project, but I thought it is good maybe to, to really, um, remind ourselves of that, but I also wanted to combine that with something else that we did use indirectly in, in the Shifting Grounds project, something that I think we are using also in, um, Transpath planning project, but that also uh, uh, can can be explained more explicitly as part of of existing approaches or methods. And in my case, as a, as a policy analyst, I am familiar with with these kind of activities as being part of a of a policy analysis approach. This is a picture from a textbook that we use in teaching in Delft, both at, uh, at TU Delft and at IHE Delft in policy analysis classes on, on policy analysis of multi-actor systems. And it, and it depicts actually really the first stage of, of a policy analysis process um, with, where you start with sort of an initial problem perception and hopefully end with sort of a framed problem and, and a plan of action. But that plan of action could be the plan for um, transdisciplinary research uh, done together. And um, what, what you would typically do is, is look at the system from different angles, uh, different aspects, try to understand the, 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 the causal influences in sort of a, a system analysis. For some people, it might be also a dipsier analysis or a, or a causal loop diagram, but also look at the actors and the institutions involved and look at the the, the, the future scenario analysis, um, which also in Mexico we have seen with that really nice exercise that uh, I think Lakshmi facilitated, uh, at least for the people. No, I think it was also for the online colleagues using using one novel technique for those scenario analysis. But, but based on that, you would come up with a sort of a richer problem description and um, yeah, see where are your maybe your interesting scientific gaps but also sort of um, follow on activities, not just for science, but also for, for society. So I think that's maybe a useful yeah, diagram to share with you all, also just to, to give some structure to what uh, I guess uh, everyone is doing um, uh, in, in the case notes already. And what I would like to do now is I, I would not want to go through all these sort of separate approaches because they can be done in various ways. And I think we have some tools available or maybe future webinars to, to look in some of them or to share experiences with some of them here. But what I would want to do um, in, in this, uh, in this, in this uh, 
last part is um, explain a little bit what the initial problem perception would entail for a policy analyst. And I think that's useful because um, if we're looking at transformations, we are looking at collective um, collective action problems. And uh, in that sense, the, the lens of a policy analyst, I think can, can come in uh, handy. Um, and I think is applicable also to settings that are maybe more informal or more bottom-up organized, but that do involve this notion of a collective issue requiring some collective action. So that the, 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 the problem for a policy analyst starts with, with um, five key, key elements that actually should be present to, to say that we have a worthwhile policy analysis problem. Um, and those elements are a problem owner, uh, a gap, actions or actionability, agency if you want, um, but then also trade-offs uh, and a, or a dilemma, and of course the presence of, of multiple actors. So let me let me very briefly um, go over each of these main elements um, with you. So the problem owner is really key, very important, and. We have had some discussions uh, in, in previous meetings and, and, and workshops on positionality. Hey, what is our position as a scientist? Um, and, and of course, with, with that also comes the question, do we consider ourselves as, as sort of maybe concerned or engaged scientists or sometimes scientists as activists? Do we consider ourselves to be the problem owner? Or do we consider another actor or stakeholder to be the problem owner and if we consider another actor maybe a local community or maybe a government agency that 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 we are trying to support um are, are we are we really checking that our idea of what the problem is 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 really also their idea of what the problem is and realize that being explicit about your problem owner is important because actors, stakeholders, people will worry really about different problems. Maybe the overarching issue of a wetland or of circularity or, or, or of a transboundary river that needs to be carefully managed. Maybe at that level, there is agreement that that issue is of joint importance, but what more specifically is, is really the problem or maybe the most important problem and um, a promising solution that that will really different differ for from one stakeholder to an, to another, and where we start our intervention or even our, our working with these stakeholders um, really also depends on on what problem we take as our starting point and whose problem this is, who who is the problem owner uh, connected to to this problem. Um, the second one is is the problem owner uh, has a problem if if there is a gap, and that gap is typically a gap between the current situation or maybe the the future situation as it is expected in sort of a, a business as usual scenario, uh, something a, a lot uh, uh, occurring in in climate change related discussions. So between that current or, or that expected um, situation plus the desired situation where we would actually want to be uh, in, in a situation where there is sufficient, secure, safe water for, for everyone or, or where we do not deplete our, our water resources unnecessarily. And that gap is, is really essential to, to, uh, to speak of a, of a problem. If there is no gap, there is no need to, to take action. But uh, for a policy problem, and I think also for our transformation types of problems, um, it also needs to be actionable. If we frame the problem in a way that it is just um, bothering us, that we cannot actually do anything about it, yeah, then it's not very interesting 
I would say for a policy analyst, but also not for a transdisciplinary uh, researcher, because whatever we do, it will not make any difference. And sometimes that diff that that is just a matter of making sure that we frame the problem correctly. And 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 the example I often use as a, as a very simple example for this is we can frame the the, the problem of of the weather as 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 a problem of of uh, of hey it's 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 raining if if that is our problem at least on the short term local level you can't do anything about it huh? it's 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 whether ra either raining or it's not raining and if it's if it's raining yeah then well too bad but if we frame it as um um getting wet from the rain then it becomes actionable because then there are lots of things we can do about it. We can take an umbrella, we can decide to stay indoors um, and, and all kinds of other things to, to prevent ourselves or, or reduce the extent to which we get wet from the rain. So, so that is important in, in, in framing the problem in also an actionable way, even if, if the action is, is, is short of a complete solution for the problem because with transformation, issues and, and and typically with complex problem problems um really solving them may be uh, a too high an ambition may, may be even impossible but we should feel that that we can have an influence for the positive and i think that's also very much the philosophy behind our project eh? not just to have these transformations occurring um to us or or to or to the stakeholders we try to work with but really to to empower a little bit to, to, to have a, at least an influence towards more sustainable trajectories or more equitable or just trajectories. Um, and then it, if it's interesting, the solution should not be sort of self-evident, but there, there, there will be some dilemmas. Um, things that are good for one may be bad for another or things, actions good on the short term may not be so promising on the on the long term in that peri-urban project that, that I talked about before. If, if it's about securing water supply for villagers, you can immediately imagine that there is a call for more and deeper wells. And indeed on the, on the short term, that, that can be a solution. And on the longer term, um, a groundwater researcher can, can really help to see how sustainable or how long such a type of solution might be expected to work and and it might sometimes be shorter than than you hope so it, it should not be evident that this is what we need to do because if that is evident then it's uh, it's may be still a sort of a problem but it's more a problem for for action and and not and not for analysis or research but i think uh, almost all problems uh, upon a second look um, or all solutions upon a second look to, to our types of, of water related problems do involve trade-offs and, and dilemmas. And then finally, it's important to realize this all takes place in, in a multi-stakeholder setting. So the problem is perceived differently, but it can really only be resolved if different stakeholders play a part or do not sort of actively uh, obstruct it, but also analyzing, understanding, and acting on the problem should be a, a collective effort. And uh, yeah, sort of as an analytical tool that, that brings in stakeholder analysis or institutional analysis, network analysis types of instruments. Um, so so with, with, with these elements, um, you could say that hey, then, then we have a problem worth solving. And, and I think also in our, in our projects, it would be good to be explicit about what these elements are for our for our cases the cases that that we want to to work on in the notes um to to then maybe move on um something um that yeah so so the, these are a bit more the um the next steps the more the, the more detailed analysis although they, they would still be maybe exploratory and and partly conceptual in nature and of course the question of how we how we connect all, the, all those parts and and just reminding ourselves that that we do this not in in a straightforward linear me mechanical way um, 
but that that is really sometimes a puzzle and 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 a puzzle to yeah for us and and the people that we work with to to decide on on what the story is what what the picture is that that emerges from these from these parts um, so not to present this as an overly uh, mechanistic uh, process um and and i think um this is one set of methods and one overarching approach i think there is a lot of similarity with other approaches and and methods um and definitely including the the, the t-labs approach that um, um, our colleagues in mexico are very familiar with but also i think some of the the partners in kenya um, um, are familiar with so um there there is not just one good way to do this and i think many sort of similar approaches are available and and are there out there for us to to really uh, use and and benefit from and this one uh, uh, shared i think also earlier by uh, by lakshmi and and pati is is, is definitely a, uh, a good resource to use for these kind of analysis together with with stakeholders um yeah and, and i think that that leaves us with some 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 questions maybe for for also discussions huh? if if uh, if we think as a on our Transpath project. Okay, so then where are we? Um, I think we have some initial problem frames to start with in, in, all, the, in all the countries. Um, and maybe we are at different stages as to um, how we have discussed them and de co-developed them, co-created them as starting points for our projects together with the societal stakeholders. Um, but but it would be maybe interesting to just uh, have a bit of exchange on these kind of questions um, against, and that is the last slide. This this slide that um, um, what was was developed by, by colleagues in in Berlin, um, also also present at that conference in Berlin with this transdisciplinary working group that that we had in that uh, hydrological society. And, and making the notion of um, closing up and closing down kind of opportunities for transdisciplinary research, distinguishing sort of different components of, of knowledge methodologies, which, which maybe are closer to, to academic and scientific activities, to, to the problem framings that, that I have been talking about, and to then actually um, do things at the interventions. I thought it made, I thought, it would be nice to close with this slide as it also just raises a lot of questions around transdisciplinary research but also questions i think that uh, maybe are good for us to to ask ourselves now so with that um i would like to uh, i would like to stop the the presentation part and see if there is um, someone who wants to respond or, or share or or ask something yeah thank you uh leon so are there immediate questions from you uh it, it's not a question uh, it's just that when you were presenting one thing that comes to my mind is that uh it seems that problem framing is really very very important and in your last slide you also mentioned uh scale and who are, are there with you when you are framing the problem as well so given our own work our own research that we are doing in this project it looks to me that we still have a lot to do if we are if we plan to follow exactly how it is because it may take a lot of time even to frame the problem because that also requires us to invite many more stakeholders and not just us because like you mentioned who is the owner i mean for whom are we are, are we not a part of that problem also right so yeah so i mean like i said it's not a question but it's something that probably we need to further think about that how do we frame it correctly, each of our cases? Yeah, I I, I I would agree with your comment or your observation, Anamika, in including the fact that, that we are a stakeholder ourselves as well. And then in that sense, we also have a, have a 
have something to say in in that problem framing and and i don't think it is even sort of necessarily bad if we if if we maybe start with looking out for who who connects to to what we consider the the, the problem framing because if if you would do all these things completely out in the open then maybe going to the same communities or the same stakeholders we work with but in some cases, maybe water is not even the first thing on their <laughs> priority list. And still, that is for us, of course, uh, one of our boundaries. So it, it is really about in the, indeed pl also playing and, and, and maybe negotiating a bit the, the boundaries. But um, one thing that, that we did encounter in, in the Shifting Grounds project is that, that at some point, uh, it, it, it became very difficult to keep the this. some of the science really connected to some of the developments in, in the villages and if, if that happens I think it's also not necessarily bad but but uh, if we can try to start together and then then um, then then we are off on, on a good start and and it may also require us sometimes to do some things that are not directly relevant for science but that that we can do as scientists and as sort of part of the group to to support other stakeholders as we expect them to support us by participating maybe in our data collection or in our workshop type of, of activities May I yeah. go on? Yeah, please, uh, Kwan. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, we, I just tried to join a meeting tentatively because I already scheduled another meeting uh, before. <laughs> uh, yeah, so very happy to see you again, especially to hear uh, Leon, even to our patient. Yeah, I think uh, John Disciplinary is, uh, I think, uh, also very much our interest. Mm. Uh, here, especially we try to, uh, let's say, to make more uh, impacts uh, or, or translate science into into practice, where we try to work it, especially with local government to develop uh, policies, but also to uh, some particularly industry or enterprises. Uh, yeah, so I think I think this is is really uh, interesting. Of, of course, I think this also very challenging because at least now from university uh, perspective, we see quite a gaps really between uh, difference from university to 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 practice. I think it's the when when for example we try to to do something more scientifically. Uh, like, and then write some papers, but we cannot really give people those papers. Uh, and even yeah, sometimes we see uh, to talk with 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 the government or with 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 company, the consulting firms, they are doing maybe maybe better job. <laughs> even they don't really need to go too insight on uh, scientific understanding. Yeah, so. That that what we're trying to 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 work now is to to collaborate uh, with consultants, some others, uh, yeah. And uh, I'm just wondering uh, because we, for example, now I'm trying to work on uh, or look on some framework to really to work on this uh, collaborations. For example, we've been looking at the triple helix, where academy, governments, and industry. But also some other helix, the quid, uh, I think the quintums or some others, where people can uh, uh, really to work uh, together. Yeah. So Leon, when 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 we're talking about this gen basically, uh, what type of the models or I mean kind of approach or, or something similar that uh, you you think we, we can we can uh, we can learn or we can can look at further yeah that there are also in in literature on transdisciplinary there are some of these sort of 
models and uh, I don't, I'm not sure um, exactly about their names, but but one that 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 has sort of this this picture that it is often used. It has that picture that 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 looks a bit like maybe the triple helix type of picture with three types of of stakeholders being involved. Mm -hmm. And I think in 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 the in the type of work that, that maybe you do now with your institute in Vietnam, it's 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 maybe quite common that uh, you work in a business environment and so that maybe your societal component is, is also involving industry and, and, and businesses and then maybe consultants. Um, if you work more on, on local level community issues like like maybe in in Mexico or, or Kenya, then then maybe it's it's more that you work with with NGOs or, or civil society or, or conservation groups and uh, um, but but in any cases, I think if you look at it from a sort of narrow efficiency perspective, transdisciplinary science does not fit sort of the the efficiency type of of thinking. It 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 would fit better than the thinking of in in science maybe maybe at least for me of of sort of slow science. Um, but but thereby also maybe meaningful science because indeed you. As a scientist, I can write a paper much more efficiently if that is my main goal, uh, without engaging with with other stakeholders. Mm. Just doing maybe a good literature review or a model study, that is the most efficient way for me probably to write a paper. But but because the interaction and and the communication with others takes takes time, but I guess it also sort of enriches mm. and and deepens your your understanding and. I think the 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 idea be, behind transdisciplinary science is that 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 not only enriches and deepens the understanding of the scientist, but also of all the other um, sort of parties involved, who also each for themselves may be more efficient in 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 a in a narrow uh, idea. Um, an NGO can maybe really efficiently sort of advocate and get media attention by by not get getting into dialogue with others uh, consultancies can probably also produce reports quite efficiently uh, but by not having a real dialogue but um, but but I think that the uh, in that sense the the, the the transdisciplinary science comes with an yeah may, maybe an investment in in dialogue that that pays off in a depth of understanding and and just uh, maybe a broader contribution to to science, to society, than just our uh, immediate uh, key performance targets, let's say. But but it but it does create a lot of tensions uh, between each of the players, including us as scientists. Uh, we do need at some point to produce papers if we want to make a promotion or if we just want to get a PhD. Yeah. Let's just say also the expected uh, um, outcome of the transdisciplinary projects. Is it like a policy recommendations or what is really the key output of, of the transdisciplinary project? Yeah, if, if, we, if we talk about it as transdisciplinary science, then I think mm. a part of the output at least had okay. to be in that sort of quadrant sh should be scientific outputs and uh, mm -hmm. ca can be papers, ca can also be just other maybe mm. methodologies, but but in, in the scientific mm. world eventually being put forward for mm. peer review and, and scrutiny in, 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 in publications mm. and papers or at least presentations. Mm. But what those mm. are can, can be quite mm. can be anything it can it can be like like in shifting grounds a better understanding of the hydrogeology of of certain um systems mm. it, it in that same project another phd produced a, a, an approach a participatory approach to develop games together with community stakeholders uh, so the um, mm. um and, and the postdoc researcher produced papers on a sort of a multi-dimensional index that that could inform policy decisions on on water uh, water groundwater security um, and and similarly i think on the sort of societal sides the these in 
these hoped for mm. outcomes can can really differ depending on what what the case is and then what those stakeholders are are looking for um yeah mm. and and one one of the one of the big boundaries in transdisciplinarity that that is uh, that is known is is that uh, we tend to work on sort of project or program basis a few years and that is not the 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 time span in which you of, often in, in which you really produce lasting outcomes. Both both science, I think, takes takes longer time than just one one four or five year study, but definitely also societal yeah. transformations. So, mm. Yeah. Thank you, Leon. I think there are questions. Just ah yeah. I see I see in the in the in the chat. You want to un unmute to to uh, to to ask it, Jaime? Uh, well, I feel still a bit sleepy, you know. <laughs> so <laughs> okay. I, I thought that just uh, asking the question through the chat would, would work. But yeah, I was wondering about that because uh, in my experience, uh, it's pretty difficult not to do uh, transdisciplinary research per se, which is as you said hard. But you know, I found many uh, institutional barriers. Uh, so I was wondering, what was your experience? Yeah, I, I, I think I also found quite, quite, quite some barriers. One, one thing that makes in uh, in Delft um, the the, inst the institutional environment slightly more sort of conducive to, to this type of research is that for IHE Delft, uh, it is always already a part of sort of its 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 mission. It's in, it's not just to to produce science and, and to educate uh, people via MSCs and PhD education, but also to to contribute to to let's say real world um, um, capacity development and, and water issues. So that makes it a little bit easier at at TU Delft, Delft University of Technology, that that is, of course, also still part of the mission to contribute to society, but but really, as it is, I guess, at many universities, meaning really nice to do. And if we can get nice publicity with it, we should do it. But it's not uh, what, what, what we typically sort of fund. So there it it is already a bit more difficult and I found it also a bit more difficult in, in, in the past, in the earlier years when I started there as an assistant professor. Um, but there still that that is still sort of an engineering university. And in that sense, sort of engineering universities also still do have the the urge to to design things and to sort of um, make things in addition to just understanding and, and describing things. But what I've also really seen and and benefited from is that I, I guess there there are there are these kind of waves and I guess in in the past maybe you has have had sort of an at some point maybe a sort of an action research kind of wave, but that that definitely finished uh, I, I guess in the 1990s or early 2000s. But what I what I do see now is that this whole notion of transdisciplinarity it it does seem to to be gaining a lot of traction actually and and that at and that I also see at TU Delft I see people talking about it who have ne never sort of cared about it before who who in that sense also maybe just use it as a, as a, as a buzzword but nevertheless that that does help uh, to to do it in sort of the right way and. Um, it's it's true that that program that funded shifting grounds it was actually also still one of the few programs maybe that that the Dutch Science Council had for these types of activities but but I think the number is 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 growing also with sort of the the science funders so um, yeah definitely institutional barriers and and maybe if you really want to uh, it depends also what what you want as as yourself as a scientist. It's also choices we all make f just for ourselves based on what we, I guess, enjoy. And given that I just enjoy it, not just doing science for science, but also for society, I just also uh, chose to invest 
in depth a little bit, even if it was not strictly speaking efficient. Um, and it does help a lot in teaching, by the way. So that's that's a sort of a positive thing. Uh, although also in institutional careers that teaching is not the most uh, uh, highly weighted contribution we make, but it is an important part of us as academics. And I think the transdisciplinary research does give you more insight in the also in, in the practical problems. And I think many of our students do not end up in academics. So in that sense, I think there is also really a positive um, yeah, effect of this type of research. Yeah. Okay, thanks a lot. Thank you, Jaime, for your question and uh, Leon for your response. Um, I have actually also a question. Um, you mentioned, eh, so uh, you've mentioned, well, you have mentioned a lot of interesting things, um, but you talked about um, uh, ownership, uh, but also about empowerment and, uh, and stakeholders and have, uh, having those stakeholders then on board. Um, yet at the same time, I think a lot of this, what is promoted as transdisciplinary research is also very much politically somewhat motivated. Hey, look at our proposal. We take a political stance of social inclusions uh, and sustainable ju uh, uh, justice, those kinds of terms we see reflected um, back. Um, so, and you talked about positionality. Um, so I'm not sure where my question actually is going, but these are, I think, also relate to, to 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 that problem framing eh? so that we also that transdisciplinary research we create a narrative that that contributes to our problem framing as well of why are we doing um, research and that we are less um, let's say the neutral independent researcher uh, in these cases but but that we actually, with this kind of research, want to contribute to a more social, just, just and sustainable development. As I yeah. said, I don't know where the question is going. But yeah, no, but those are those are kind of co 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 complicating issues that 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 you may run into um, in in that shifting grounds and in in that paper. I think we also describe it of, of course we we started out with with a question and, and with sort of a, a scientific ambition to to look at groundwater issues then we were looking for villages that actually also were sort of experiencing groundwater issues and that seemed to have some some level of organization capable of of, of sort of um, engaging with us and then um, in in some of these villages we we really started engaging but also to discover that some of the things that from our let's say water science perspective um, seemed the bigger issues that that we could not basically touch them without uh, uh, upsetting uh, the the entire the entire village so what what we then did to really together with that 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 village is was was something a bit a bit smaller realizing that if we would touch the, the larger issues, which also involved some, some local industrialists um, taking water, but also a, a just a division within the community about what, what they wanted with, with, their, with their drinking water and with the presence of these larger industrialists and these outsiders coming to the village, that they, they ha had actually violent clashes about it and that we thought, okay, we can start meddling with this and then leave again in, in, in three or four years. But then, then we 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 just start pouring in something that that we can't make any sensible contribution to. So we simply agreed to to focus on something much smaller and and probably not um, in in at least in my opinion maybe not the, the root cause of some of the water issues in that village. But uh, plus plus that that sometimes you come into. In that case, also with that village, we came in with a with with one what we thought was a non-political village um, informal leader, who nevertheless uh, uh, later was sidelined, and and uh, uh, that that also really af affected our activities and how we were perceived, and uh, um, yeah, 
not, not trusted by the entire village. So we then had to work quite a lot to 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 rebuild that and, and also with the other groups in the village. Yeah. So we are in that sense then also part of the political process that we don't understand, don't know, uh, and should be really careful with. Yeah, and and um, and I think also in our our program when we um, advocate for transformations, right, we we basically already make a stance that transformations that we well have an idea that transformations are needed. Yeah, although I would also, at least for me, our project is e yeah indeed is based on the idea that transformation are needed, but we could even say. If only because they are they are, they they are happening. S some transformations I I think are are hopefully recognized by 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 several stakeholders as 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 happening and as requiring maybe even if it's just a a, a react reactive response but but requiring some some action. But indeed the notion. But would that, you like that... to pay attention to transformations that we? are recognizing which we deem actually to worsening let's say the situation no i think that's part of the of the, of the dialogue right and of the debate and 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 to figure out can we actually even agree on the parts of the transformation that that we think we we should support and maybe the parts where, where we disagree and and maybe that 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 clarity even is is, is quite difficult to to obtain and of course, it becomes easier to obtain if we work with a limited set of stakeholders and especially those that agree with us. And that is actually, I think, the tendency that we all always have. But I think that's also the biggest pitfall we can we can step into to, to, to stay within our comfort zone with the stakeholders that tend to agree with us, which tend to be especially the nature conservation organizations, um, but that are not the only ones we need really to, to make that change. Thank you. Um, are there other questions? I see that time here in the Netherlands just has passed 4 p.m. So that means that we are uh, reaching the hour. So is there a final question or remark? No? Okay. Can you uh, have send a presentation later, Leon? Yeah, I, I will I will check what which folder we are using nowadays and then I will make sure to to put it on there and to share the link with with everyone. Uh, yeah. Thank and you. I think at some point we still try to post uh, the recordings on, on a YouTube channel, but that might take a bit longer. Yeah. Okay, thank you. And um, let me then thank you, Leon, for sharing your insights with us it was very interesting um and then let me repeat again that um in our schedule we have uh patricia for on the topic of q methodology for next month scheduled and i don't know it again by heart but i thought it is 18 september for now scheduled um and um, so there are still quite some spots open. So um, we will, with every invitation, also send around the link to the scheduled document in which we schedule the, the different um, webinars. So please um, uh, announce yourself also when you have interesting, interesting stuff uh, to share. Um, Again, thank you, Leon. Everybody, thanks for being here with us. And I'm looking forward to seeing you soon again online. Yeah, and thanks. Maybe also just a final reminder to, for the ones for the project meeting there that is Thursday. I'm now looking at Anamika again as project leader. Okay.